I think about what it takes to be a good organization. I took those skills. My very first job outside of a tobacco field was at the Aner IGA, which is a little grocery store, the only one Aner had. Jimmy Ray Johnson hired me, and he looked at me and said, son, I believe you'd be good for this job. I was 15 years old. He said, would you be interested in the IGA pilot program? I said, I'd love to be a pilot, sir. <laughs> he said, well, bag those groceries and pilot in that car, all right? I did everything in addition to bagging groceries, ladies and gentlemen. I was mopping floors and pulling up produce, cleaning bathrooms. I was lining up the cans, burning the trash, filling drink machines, and doing one job that I did not like. It was called pushing the parking lot. In the heat of the summer in South Carolina, you melt like a stick of butter. And everybody would be in the fields working, so the parking lot would be empty. And we didn't know anything about any blowers. And certainly no vehicle came around and swept up our mess. They gave me a broom about this wide and put me out, and I pushed that parking lot. That's what I did, is swept up every grain of sand, picked up every piece of trash, and carried it away. I did not like that job. What you don't know about me, ladies and gentlemen, is I tan like a cup of milk, all right? I just curl and smell. I, I hated being out in the sun. And one day, I realized that that one negative in my job was causing me to dislike the entire job. All right, that's how that seed of deceit works. We start convincing ourselves that they're not paying us enough, they're not treating us well enough, that this one job is ruining the whole job. I went home that day and my father asked me, how's work going, son? And I told him it was going great because that's what he wanted to hear. But I said, there's only one job I don't like that I do out there. He sat up very straight and got that serious look where I knew I'd said something wrong, I just hadn't figured out what it was yet. He said, tell me what it is that you don't like, son. And I said, I don't like pushing that parking lot. They hired me to be a bag boy, but now they have me being a glorified janitor. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. He told me two lessons that day that I followed the rest of my life and made me the success that I ended up being. The youngest police chief in the state of South Carolina's history at 22 and the youngest chief deputy at 33. I want you to know, folks, you can work your way to the top with a good attitude, and he told me the secret to that. He said, what someone has you doing when they are paying you is none of your business. I understand union contracts and I understand all the agreements, but how many times do you work with someone that every time you ask them to do something, they wave a job description in your face or talk about something being above their level of pay? Folks, when you are on a team and in a family, it means that you are willing to do whatever it takes to make the entire group successful. What we have to do is not hold ourselves back. There are enough people willing to do that for you. What you have to be willing to do is step up and take whatever challenge there is, make whatever difference there is. The next thing he told me was a very good one too. He said, if you don't like doing that job, you and I had better be the only two who ever know about it. Folks, I didn't know what that meant back then, but when I took a job and became a leader and a supervisor, I knew exactly what he meant. How many times do you work with someone in the office that comes in and they feel like it's their life mission to tell you all the things they don't like? Look around here. You are in the most beautiful structure I've spoken in ever. This is a wonderful town with great opportunity and wonderful tax base, and they're doing wonderful things with it that invest back in their citizens and back into you. What you want to do is look for the blessings everywhere. You can find trash blowing in any street but it sure is nice to have a paved highway to drive on. Don't forget the big picture. And that's where we stand right now. When you talk about values, think about what we just said. Accountability that has to be offset with caring and a willingness to do anything to make everyone successful. I heard a story one time about an older man and his wife. They were growing old together and he was excited about all the things they had done. And they were gonna spend their lives together talking about the wonderful history and the past that they had. The problem is she started losing her hearing. It scared him because he thought, what if I'm not able to communicate with this woman I love about all the wonderful things we've done? He talked to a doctor and he said, what can I do to help and stop this? He said, how bad is it? He said, I don't know. He said, well, tell me how far away from her you have to be before she can hear. So he walks home that night and walks up to the kitchen door and there she is with her back turned at the stove, working on something for dinner that night. And he thinks this is a perfect opportunity. He stands at the doorway and he calls out to her, Hi, honey, what are you cooking? Dead silence. He walks halfway over the room and he calls out again, Hi, honey, what's for dinner tonight? Not a word. He finally has tears in his eyes as he realizes it's worse than he thought it was. And he walks up to her ear and he says, Hi, honey, what are you cooking for dinner tonight? She said, I told you three times now, meatloaf, go get your hearing check. <laughs>
What we have to realize, ladies and gentlemen, what we have to realize is just because everyone is not responding to us the way we want them to, it doesn't mean they are the ones going deaf. Everybody is sending messages to you. Everybody is putting out their opinions to you. You can see it in their face and their body language, how they handle things, how they're performing. What we have to do is care so much that we're involved that we listen more than we try to lead. Ladies and gentlemen, leadership is built on just a handful of beautiful things, and it's about respecting one another. It's about respecting yourself, making sure that you don't cut those corners to put someone else in a bind. It's also about responsibility, not just responsibility for the duties you're given, but responsibility for your partner, your family, those around you. You have to care about everyone. I realize in the legacy that I leave behind is only going to be as strong as my daughters get to enjoy. How do I want people to talk about me later on? Relationships are incredibly important and we can never miss a chance to strengthen those by showing our best and pulling the best out of others. When one person is successful, we all are successful. The people I watched as we went to hire the last few times, they told me they came in about all these wonderful visions they had, but I looked at their packet and they had zero work history. More degrees than a thermometer, but absolutely no work history. Folks, after talking with them a while, I wouldn't let them house sit my cat, much less go out and deal with people during an emergency. What we have to do is start putting something inside of people other than just in their minds. We have to get it in their hearts. I learned that lesson in a classroom with Holly Butler. She taught me in the third grade, they invited me to speak, invited me to speak at her class and also read a book on Dr. Seuss Day. And before we disconnected, they asked one question. They said, Mr. Butler, would you mind wearing your uniform? I said, I would love to wear my uniform. Why? And they said, the children love a police officer. Well, I thought, what a great time. Third grade, Dr. Seuss book. This isn't above my level. I embraced it, right? <laughs> I get my uniform on and I walk into that classroom and I have to admit it was immediate. The whispers were immediate. Look, it's a police officer. Look at the police officer. We've got a police officer with us today. And then the, the statement that changed my life. Holly Butler's daddy is a police officer. I realize that how I perform and how I behave affects how they view Holly Butler. She's either going to benefit or suffer based on how I perform. That is what many of us are forgetting these days. The legacy we're leaving behind, our others are going to inherit. What we have to do is always do our best and be our best. I decided to put that book down and talk to them about something more important that day. I asked a simple question when I sat in that big rocking chair. Boys and girls, how do you know that I am a police officer? Every hand went up in the air. When you know the answer at Ainer Elementary, you want everyone to know it, right? Ooh, 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 ooh. And I call on a little boy and he says, you're wearing a gun and a badge and a uniform. I said, that's right, that's part of it, but that's not what makes me a police officer. What if I were wearing my suit? Would I still be a police officer? Only about two thirds of the hands went up and the little girl said, yes, detectives wear that. I'm like, okay, well, that's not what I was meaning, but let's, uh, <laughs> we'll go uh, one step further. What if I wore my blue jeans and a t-shirt? Would I still be a police officer? About a third of the hands went up and a little boy said, yeah, narcotics agents wear that. <laughs> I said, boy, they sure are smart these days, aren't they? So let's boil it down to the brass tacks. Let's talk about exactly what I'm trying to get at. Boys and girls, if I showed up here today in just my pajamas, only my pajamas, would I still be a police officer? Only one hand went up and a little boy said, no, you'd be a fireman then. <laughs> <laughs> That's. <laughs> I saw my fire guy back there. I could not resist. <laughs> For, oh, my, 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 he just ended my time. <laughs> Folks, the same message I talked to them about that day is the same message I'm here to deliver to you. It is never the uniform or the position or the pay raise that makes you who you are. It's always what's inside. Do not miss opportunities to show people what's really underneath there. That you have a heart and that heart beats with passion. That passion is shown with pride and that pride is what makes you a professional. That uniform that I wore for 28 years never did a thing until I put it on. The magic was inside. What you have to do is work those miracles yourself. You've got to be the one that takes the lead. You have to be the one that makes the difference. 
what I'm trying to do is instill in my daughters that they can do anything. I'm just like my mom. You are the one who can do anything. You are the best and the best looking. But what I never want them to forget, what I never want them to forget is that accountability that my father talked about. If you do not hold yourself to the highest standard, if you only get your standard from the policy and procedures, that is the minimum standard and it will eventually cause you to fail. Our values do not come from the policies and procedures. The policies and procedures are to come from our values. They are to reflect the priorities of leadership. And they are to be embraced by the people who understand that if I work here, they expect the absolute best. Those are the things that are going to make your career and make your life. When you finish, it won't just be about drawing a retirement check. You need to be able to look back and think about the days that you made a difference that no one else could have in your position because you are special. There is something special inside of you. You are different and we'll, you have different talents. Wait for that timing. Find a way to be on the team and to take leadership and responsibility for everyone around you. Don't wait until some magical promotion or some pay raise to start really showing your talent. The people who chase pay raises and promotions rarely deserve either. The ones who are the most successful are the ones who are writing their resume today for a job that they do not even know exists tomorrow.